Uh, welcome to Turtle Power Presents Power Playthroughs Project with Turtle Power. I'm your host, Turtle Power. This is the podcast where I play games in Power Boy, and today it's also a YouTube video that you can watch. If you go, I don't know how to get to YouTube, um, but if you look for Turtle Power on YouTube, you can find me. And uh, I'm going to be checking out a little bit of A Long Way Down today, and uh, Locothor is here to check it out with me. Hello, Locothor. Oh my gosh, did I lose Logothor right as I tried to introduce Logothor? Oh no, what happened? What? Okay, I, ask, I said, I think Discord crapped out. <laughs> now I've lost you again. What? No, okay. I'm saying stuff. You are saying stuff. Hello, welcome. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Apparently Discord's not so Yeah, Discord's temperamental. Um, you know what I just realized? Uh, uh what? We, we've been sitting here doing, like, some weird technical troubleshooting and stuff for, I don't know, five minutes or so? Sure. And it's just occurred to me that we've never actually spoken before. I don't think. Have we? In, like, actually... Um, I played Diablo 2 one oh, yeah. on the Discord, and, and everyone happened to join at nearly the same moment. That's Just right. out of serendipity. That's right. Okay. So we have briefly chatted. That's right. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, today uh, I'm checking out a game called A Long Way Down. Um, the uh, the developer publisher of the game uh, was gracious enough to share a key with me. Um, I will call it specifically. I can't remember. If, I think it was the publisher, on this one, but I'll call it out in, in the show notes. I feel terrible that I don't. Now I have to look because I feel so bad that I don't know that off the top of my oh, head. Are you on some sort of list? Um, I am on the list called I am a contributor to geek to geekmediacom and so. Uh, I like writing about video games, and so sometimes I say, "Hey, okay. may I write about your video game, please?" And so you have have some clout. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Because um, this has got to be like the fifth thing where you've gotten behind the scenes code. Yeah. Well, it's it's yeah. It's it's. I'm like I I'm you know I'm getting at at, at thirty. How old am I? What year is it? I'm 32. I'm 32 years old. I'm just getting my foot in the door on video game journalism. So, uh, you know, okay. yeah, it's fun. I like it. I like I like playing new games. I like writing about them. Um, but yeah, it was Forever Entertainment was who provided me with a copy of this game. So thank you so much to them. Um, let's check options real quick. Give me subtitles. Oh, wait. Uh, no, I don't want to. Camera movement speed can stay at one. Language can stay at English. I want. How do I get D pad? Okay. I don't see subtitles. There's no options for subtitles. That could be tough. Um, so, look at all this gameplay guide information. That's too much information once. Uh, what I can tell you about this game so far, uh, uh, dear friends, is that it is some sort of a dungeon crawler deck building roguelike, I think? I saw just a little bit about it and was like, this game looks awesome. I don't want to know anymore until I'm playing it. So, um, and we're just going to dive in and play it. Okay. Let's do it. When you the, when you put those words together, roguelike mm -hmm. isn't the, an adjective that usually goes at the end of that. So, I think I think it's I mean I, it I, certainly doesn't fit the Berlin interpretation, I think we can say. So, wait, what? So in the roguelike uh, creation community, okay. there is a thing called the Berlin interpretation where at one of the roguelike Conventions, the roguelike developers convention that they had in Berlin, it was decided by some group of presumably a bunch of white men that, like, this list of properties is what makes a roguelike. And they basically defined rogue and net hack and dungeon. And, like, ASCII, possibly tile based, mm -hmm. like, game that you play with a keyboard interface <laughs> and so forth. Um, That's very specific. So, well, right, and uh, this was also made in like a very long time ago before the game dev scene sort of exploded. So okay. everyone at the time making roguelike, basically making versus based roguelikes that run in a terminal. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, I, roguelike is such a tough thing for me because it's, I don't know. I mean, I think procedural, to, for me, what it means is it is a procedurally generated game which you start over when you die on a new procedurally generated route, 
and then the rogue light aspect of it is that there is some sort of ongoing progression. That's kind of all it has to be for me in order for me to call it a rogue light, which maybe maybe I overuse the term. I don't know. Um, I think the most useful, simplest definition is that the reason the original game Rogue was made as it was with the procedural generation was because the developer of it wanted to be able to be surprised by his own game. He didn't. Like, he's like, I'm making a game, I'm going to know how it works, unless there's random elements where it can surprise me. So if you have that, the rest is just whatever. That's kind of cool. I did not know that. Um, yeah. I've got the, uh, I, I turned my camera off here for a little bit because we've got text up on the screen. Um, it looks like the reason there's not subtitles is probably because there's not voice acting, which makes sense. Uh, so, uh, this is Mabri saying, Sam, Sam, can you hear me? And then Sam says, Mabri, I hear you. And Mabri says, that means your soul hasn't reached its destination. My soul? Mabri, where am I? Well, your body is right here in front of me. I'm giving you your funeral rites. And uh, so Sam is a dude, and uh, we're now seeing the scene of uh, Sam laying, Sam's body laying, and uh, Mabri is a woman with braids over him who has... Is that a cord in the cob in her hand? I think? Maybe? It certainly looks like a corn Yes. And she's got a uh, face paint over the top half of her face, like a white face paint. Um, I she... might note that all the characters have darker skin. They look like they could be Native American. I would guess so, yeah. She, that's, she's also got some, some headdress and stuff going on there. Um... Uh, oh, she says, The spirits told me they found you too gray to lead you onward. That, or too rebellious. I'm not sure. I'm dead? Yes, but that's the least of your concerns right now. I'm going to try to guide you through limbo. The spirits told me that some lost souls become complacent. I convinced them to steal some weapons and bring them to you. Now we see Sam uh, in his upright form in limbo, apparently. And he says, Cards? And the camera pulls back a little bit to show him holding uh, a handful of purple glowing cards in his hand. And she says, You recognize them. We used similar ones before. You should be able to face off against lost souls, as we did when you were alive. Now the camera's behind him, and he's looking forward into the rocky abyss of Limbo, holding the cards out to his side. And she says, But here, you will do it while looking them straight in the eyes. And he says, Papa Legba, watch. Papa, Papa Legba? Papa Legba. L-E-G-B-A? Papa Legba, watch over me. I right, we get a loading screen. So this is going to be a whole, like, my, my damn soul is trying to make its way to the afterlife game, I guess. I didn't know that aspect of it. It makes sense. I feel like that's a good format for, uh, for a rogue-ish game. Why not rogue-ish? Instead of figuring out whether it's rogue light or rogue-like, why not just rogue-ish? Well, because then you can't... If you use that, then you won't be able to describe the game that, you know, show up in bars on you out of all your money. Wait, games that show up in bars? Uh, are... Yeah, if a, if a game were to show up in a bar and con you out of all your money. Then it would be roguish? Yes. Oh. I mean, a roguish character. Um, let's see. It says yeah. I have to escape the dungeon. Uh, Mabri says, try to find some cover. This place isn't safe. Who knows what will happen if you're caught by a lost soul. Whoa, and it takes me straight to a help menu. Uh, okay. Dungeon. In a long way down, you will have to guide Sam through an ever-changing dungeon. Each turn, you can move Sam and or place new slabs in the dungeon in order to create your own path. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find a slab deck and the slabs in your hand. Above, you'll see the movement score of your character, the number of tiles you can cross with an action point, the potions belt, the number of action points remaining this turn, and the end of turn buttons. Placing a slab, moving, no matter how far, or drinking a potion will each cost an action point. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to read the rest. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. So, um, I can't rotate my camera, um, but there's, there's just a lot of stuff to see on the screen here, eh? Um... I would almost say there's too much to see on the screen. It, it's certainly, uh, if, if that was the tutorial, 
it didn't tutorialize much. Let's see, right stick is zoom. I can just zoom in a little bit more. I can't zoom out, which is a shame because the dungeon is pretty expansive. And I can see there's spots where there's uh, a spinning wheel of cards up ahead. There's a creature of some sort, a, a dude. He has a green icon uh, on his head. I think notably the dungeon consists of uh, little square segments of purple stone with lava cracks breaking <laughs> through. And they're all floating in a void space similar to Bastion. Oh yeah, it does have a little bit of a Bastion vibe to it. Um, well, I guess I'm going to, so I, I can move the cursor around. Pile of slabs, build your path with some new slabs. Okay, I'm gonna press A. Hey, he moved to the pile of slabs. Cool. So this gave me a bunch of slabs that are now my deck. And Mabri says, these cards can shape the world around you. Oh, good. I look so glad that was not the whole tutorial. So it's now got an arrow pointing at a void. And, ah, okay. So if I press ZR and ZL, I go through the cards that are in my deck down at the bottom here. And I can choose to place one in this spot. But one of these cards, you'll see, uh, can't fit in that spot because it has walls in the wrong direction. So we have to put one that has walls in the right direction into that spot. Uh, A to submit. Uh, oh, I see. My cursor's not in the right place. A to Smith. There we go. A to Smith. There we go. So I made I made a bridge, and now I can go up to a creature called an Electric Relic, and it says, "Be careful! It's quick. It has 80 health, zero speed, zero percent attack, and zero percent defense." Let's go figure out how fighting works. Fight. I'm back in the help menu here looking at battle cards. Okay, your cards allow you to cast spells in combat. You will get all the details of your cards selecting them. All the details of your cards selecting them by left stick. Little, little off on the English there. Each card costs a certain amount of action points to cast. If the element of your card is the same as that of your weapon, you will receive a bonus. Okay, and the elements are, of course, earth, wind, fire, water, and also thunder. My favorite element. Um, these icons show you the targets affected by the card effect, whether it affects the caster, an ally, an enemy, all participants, all allies, or all enemies, and uh, the type of spell is indicated by the shape of the icon, and there are strategic, defensive, hybrid, and offensive cards. Okay, so, um, we've got poke. I'm guessing that's just, that looks like it must just be like my default ability. It's behind my face here. Let me let me get my face off for our first combat here. Oops, that's big face. There we go. Um, I'm guessing this over here on the left is just like my default basic spell. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then in the middle, I've got four cards drawn that I can do. My guy's shown on the left and the, uh, the electric relic is on the right. I'm going to do a thrust attack, which costs one point, I guess. We'll see what that does. Uh, choose my target. There's only one target. Ooh, I did 20 damage. Heck yeah. And then, hey, Loki, do you see somewhere it's telling me how many action points I have or anything? Um, maybe that's seven. I'm assuming that's what my... I mean, like, you also only have... It used the card when you cast it, so maybe when your hand is empty, then it ends your turn. That could be... Okay. It also... I guess you can press minus to end your turn right away as well. Oh, I see that on the bottom right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's increase my attack with Divine Blessing, and then we'll do another attack with the Thrust. That did 26 damage. Oh, and then opponent's turn. Okay. I'm not quite sure why that became his turn. I'm sure. Um... Okay. In the bottom right, there's there's three diamonds. I'm wondering if those are my uh my, my action points. Yeah, that used one up. Okay. So the bottom right, I basically have three actions per turn, and different cards could potentially cost more than one action. Although right now all my cards cost one action, and we're gonna do a thrust, which should kill him because he's a twenty-one health, and bam, it does twenty-six. Cool. Okay. I feel like I understand the combat now, which I did not at the start of that. I might have just missed where it told me what my action points were. And I got a new card called Blessed Attack. Sweet. Okay. You can retrieve the cards dropped by Lost Souls and add them to your deck on the appropriate altar. So I have to get to that altar before I can put it into my deck. Alright. Well, I'm gonna build a bridge to that altar. 
right there. The, the way that the cursor moves is not quite satisfying. I'm not, I'm not sure what the issue I have with it is yet, but something about it doesn't feel good. I'm going to try to uh, focus on that and see if Does I can figure out. Does the plus pad do it? You know, I have not checked that. I will try it out here. Uh, I see another soul near you. It doesn't seem hostile. Try to parlay with it. You have the same goal. Maybe you can join forces. Okay, that's that guy. So I really he has the green uh, over his head. So we're going to try and figure out how to build a bridge to him. Uh, we'll build a bridge there. And then we'll go over here. Oh, I forgot to chest check the D-pad. The D-pad does work, and it's up and left. So that's... You know what? I'll tell you what. Look, the reason it didn't feel good is because I was trying to push... This game's not quite at a 45 degree angle that I usually associate with isometric. It's it's more like like 60, 30 degrees. And so I was trying to push like up and slightly to the left to go up, but all it really wants, it just wants you to press up. And when you use the D-pad, that works really well. So Ooh, can you can you like rotate the camera and then it I I don't see a way to rotate the camera. Yeah, I don't I think feel you can. Fortunate. Yeah, that's I, usually I expect the ability to do that. Um, yeah, that's interesting. All right, let's go talk to this guy. And Sam says, "Hey, you lost too?" And this guy says, "Completely." Funny clothes. Where are you from? Roman Gaul, Aquitania. Aqu Aquitania? Sounds vaguely familiar. Must be in Europe. You're from Africa, almost. And yet we have, and yet we have no difficulty in understanding one another. I I don't know why I'm doing voices, man. The afterlife takes form. The afterlife takes form to be convenient to the soul that crosses. Oh, that's nice. That voice is that Leus, god of death. My dad. Yes. <laughs> These voices are just the same. What have I done? Uh, Sam says yes. We are both dead. But the voice you can hear is the voice of the one who's performing my funeral rites. She can speak to the dead as I once could. Roars the helmet of the ram. Okay, I will take the helmet of the ram. And now I've got uh, Marcus as part of my group. Uh, he has uh, a Kopish, which I don't know what that weapon is. I can't quite tell from the picture here. And he's got the Helmet of the Ram, and he's got a Diamond Shield. Um, cool. Ooh, a Dungeon Master appears. Here you are. You're the one who has my cards. I thought I alone could use them. Thief, you will pay the price for messing with the Dungeon Master. And he took, he took one of my cards away. Oh, what a jerk. That guy's using my cards against me. My brie. And she says, I think he's the one the spirits stole them from. And then Marcus says, Get behind me, African. I fought barbarian giants all my life. A bag of bones won't intimidate me. Huh. So now I'm in a fight, and I have both of them, I assume? Suppose. Uh, I can't tell. I think... Because I thought you were playing just as the new guy. Oh, <laughs> multiple allies you can switch. Yeah. Uh, but I did just get attacked, I heard, in the background behind the help screen that popped up automatically. So that's a little uh, unpleasant. Um, you can switch between active characters by pressing the sign buttons. Action points are shared between all characters. Switching characters allows you to use their different weapons and their base attack, as well as the equipment deck to the right of the base attack. Okay, which is made of the spells linked to the character's equipment. Okay, okay, okay. Your characters have different abilities that you can find in the character's tab of the inventory. For example, Marcus has a 25% bonus to offensive spells and adds an action point during battle. Cool. Above the deck, you'll find a potion spell. Using a potion costs one action point. Potions can have different effects in and out of combat. Okay. Sam says, a little help would be appreciated. And Marcus says, stay back. Let me fight. Um, so now I have both of them on screen. Uh, have you ever played Darkest Dungeon, Lokathor? No. Uh, I haven't either, but the uh, the visual uh, of, of the two characters on the left and the character on the right, like the, I feel like that's similar to how Darkest Dungeon shows its battle screens, but I don't really know much about that game. Um, okay. What should I do here? I can uh, increase attack for two turns. Yeah, we're going to put that on the Marcus, a big beefy boy. My big beefy boy is going to do some thrust attacks against the Dungeon Master. And then we'll do another thrust attack. 
And then, oh, he's got an ability called Heavy, heavy Blow that takes two uh, action points, and I only have one left. I didn't even realize that. We'll use Banishment. Removes all target's blessings and deals 17 damage. Cool. So then I draw new cards from my main deck and from my equipment deck, I think is what happens there. I think. Not super, like the, the mechanics on this, I feel like, are not being conveyed super well to me. Uh, it's certainly confusing what's going to happen. I don't think they ever told you. I mean, maybe if you'd read more of those help things. Well, the thing about the help things is they seem to be popping up like as they're relevant. So I'm, I kind of decided, rather than just trying to read them all at once, I would let the game bring them up as they go. Um, let's do that heavy blow attack. Yeah, kill the dungeon master. Just like every player's always wanted to. That's not true. If you're if you're a dungeon master and your players want to kill you, you're doing something wrong. Um, I got an item there called the Quaff of Protection, which I love very much. Is it Quaff? 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 I'm not sure. Uh, Marcus says, Vinny, Vinny, Vici, no, Vinny, Vinny, and Julius couldn't have done any better. And Mabrice, okay, well, I don't see what Mabrice says because I just made. Okay, this game's got a little bit of jank to it because it allowed me to move my cursor around to where I wanted to walk while dialogue was happening, and then I pressed A to advance the dialogue, which also caused my character to move to where I had put the cursor. Um, so oh, now, that's not good. Yeah, now I'm in the workshop where there's, I can upgrade my cards. You increase the quality of your cards by using some powder. Um, but it, I, it says I have zero powder. I guess we'll try anyway. Let's, no, hang, hang on. Okay. Is there like a melt button to melt down a card? Look, well, this game's got some jank. Okay. So I'm in the I'm in the menu here, and yeah. on the left hand side, right, I've got the different tabs for the menu. Mm-hmm. Seeing that. And to switch between them, I press the D-pad up or down. Okay. Okay. But I can also use the D-pad to move around within the menu I'm in, left and right. But then, naturally, I try to go to the second row of items within this menu I'm in, so I press down on the D-pad. But that takes me to okay. a different tab. All right. So here's here's a proposal as an as an experiment. If you keep pushing right off the right edge, does it wrap like a typewriter onto the next line? No. Mm -mm. That I mean that could have justified it. It, as being like it weird, highlights but... look that it highlights that blue bar. Well, what happens if the blue bar is highlighted and you push up and it goes to the different tab? Okay. Yeah, that's feels poor. It just yeah the um. The turn my camera back on here. The uh, D-pad should not be able to be used to navigate within the menu because the the analog stick I can go up and down all day and it stays within this menu. But the D-pad works to go left and right within a menu, but you can't use it to go up and down because then you switch tabs. So that's, mm, that's yeah, just disable left and right on the D-pad. Like yeah, that's a little jank. Um, you must select a card. I don't. I'm trying to select a card. Uh, oh, Y to move, so I can't press A to select a card, I have to press Y to select a card. Okay, it's, it's weird. Maybe the word move should be the word select. Um, okay, how do I get back to my inventory? Inventory. Wait. Oh, I can't, I have to go back on this, there we go. Okay, so we want to press Y on thrust to move it over. It costs 75 powder to upgrade thrust, and I see up in the top right I have 75 powder, so we're going to click upgrade. Cool, we upgraded my thrust. Okay. I don't know what happened in that dialogue because I missed it because uh, it let me move instead of advancing. A little bit of jank to this game. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not loving that aspect of it. How do I, oh, I need to build a bridge to get to there. Of course. Let's go back over here. And then we'll go back to that spot. I, uh, so far, it is unclear to me the reason that I have movement points. Um, I'm wondering if in later levels, like, I will move and then enemies will move, and so that's going to cause issues for me. Um, but I got Well, it whole... says. Oh, go ahead. There's another end turn indicator down there. I there think it is. At right. some point, the enemies will move. That must be the case. Okay. Uh. 
Oh, this, look at this, this slab I got is a remove wall slab. So I can put it there and it knocks out the walls. Okay, that's kind of cool. The, the, like, the, the laying down cards from your inventory to affect the map as you, like, make a route through it is kind of interesting. Oh, the Dungeon Master. What did he do? He just laid down some cards for me? Hey. Well, he, he put down a card at the end of the hallway, which didn't help you in this case, but I, I think it's probably random if sometimes. Oh, yeah. Here's some more slabs. I'll take them all. I'm... I'm not a fan of I, of, I guess, the visuals here. It feels incredibly busy. It's like every single tile is animating up and down in place individually. Yeah. And they're not, like, they're not, well, it's not all of them. Some of them are stationary. But the ones that are moving, they all move okay. at the same pace, but they're not, um, it's not like they're all down and then they all move up together. They're like moving up and down separately, which is a little... Yeah, they're each on their own loop. Yeah. And then the indicators that are showing where you can move and stuff are like set slightly above where the tiles are. And so their tiles are moving and it's just really, really busy. It is. It is. You are, you are not wrong about that. Um, yeah, it's the dungeon master showing up to. Oh, okay. Hey, an enemy just moved on their turn, so that answered that question. Oh man, this poor thing only has 80 health. Oh, he attacked me first though. Oh, I suppose since he moved on to my tile, he got to go first, as opposed to if I move on to its tile, then I get to go first. Okay, okay. That's that starts to get a little more interesting to me. Um, let's. Oh, I just have my regular thrust, not my not my extra powerful thrust. Um, let's do this blessed attack first because it deals damage to the target and increases my attack. So we'll do that, and then. Uh, oh, I, oh shoot! I'm attacking as Sam, not as Marcus. Oh, I want to be attacking as Marcus, my beefy boy. That's okay. We'll keep attacking as Sam since I just increased his attack. We're not gonna quite take this thing out though, huh? Not quite. It's down to 25 health. Oh no, I still have... Ooh, so Marcus being here gives me that extra action point, even if he's not the one taking action. Interesting. So then, changing the character matters. Like, I think... Like this thrust. This thrust does uh, 23 damage. If I switch to Marcus, oh, it goes up to 27 damage because he has an ability called Roman Subtle Subtlety, apparently, that boosts it. So it does matter which character is casting the spell. Okay, okay. There could be there could be some interesting depth there then. Uh, ooh, look at that. Oh, I need to remember to equip items because I got I got that cool hat last time and I didn't put it on. Uh, inventory. Uh, no, wait, no, uh, press down, uh, okay, cool hat, I can't, I can't put on the cool hat, how do I put on a cool hat, Logothor? I, your controller, is my controller, do I have to, I, I bet I have to go to a specific tile to do that, just like I had to put the card on, I want to wear that cool hat. All right, we'll just keep going. Well, if the hat went to your inventory, shouldn't you push Y for inventory? Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I was just at, see? Ooh, that's characters. Battle deck, equipment. But see, it says locked up at the top. I don't know if it's that's locked. That's probably because I think you're in the tutorial. Yeah. So it'll only let you follow the tutorial. That's what I was just thinking, yeah, that's probably what it is. Uh, Marcus says, I've never been to Africa. And Sam says, me neither. I was born in the Americas. And Marcus says, never heard of them. Must be in Asia. Uh, interesting. Do you think that's a, like, the the afterlife is not synchronous with time thing? That's my guess, What do you right? mean? Like, like, I think Marcus and Sam are from different time periods. No, I think, I think they're from the same time period, which is why Marcus has never heard of the Americas, because it's, Marcus is from the Roman Empire. Yeah, but so, Sam... So the time period would be, like, 300 BC, 300 uh, CE or earlier. Right, but if Sam is a black guy born in the Americas, 
presumably that's like Oh, my wife's popping in. Hello, wife. Hi. So, 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 Lugthorn and I have just been uh, looking up Belize just a little bit um, for things completely unrelated to the podcast, but uh, it's it's somewhat relevant because I'm reading here that uh, uh, da, 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 Belize is a culturally diverse and mixed race country with one foot in Latin America and the other in the Caribbean. This is the, or there's the Creole or Afro-European mixture population, as well as the native Maya people and the mestizos that tend to live in the north and northwest of the country. Spanish is often spoken. Um, uh, Afro-Amerindian culture, it says. Um, but that goes back to what I was talking about here. So Sam is 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 from Af, or he's he's African in heritage, but born in the Americas, which means it is post-slave trade to the Americas, right? That would have to be the case. So, if Sam's post-slave trade to the Americas and Marcus is Roman Empire, then they're from two very disparate points in history. Right? Yeah, because the last, the last group that ever called itself the Roman Empire fell in 1400. Yes. I don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. That sounds probably right-ish. Um, hey, I skipped the dungeon, and I got a magical scepter as a reward. The dungeon master says, You may have some nifty spells in this, but what are you without your legionnaire? And then uh, Marcus walks one tile away from me and says, African! And I get... I get Sam got shuttled away, and Marcus stayed behind, I think? That was weird. Um, Marbury says, Sam, still there? Good. I think you're alone, more or less. You should meditate with me. Review your life. That's why you're here. Listen to the powerful work songs of the sugarcane workers. You were born to a black mother and a white father. You grew up here, barely accepted by your brothers. The ideal fertile ground for a life of conflict. When the missionary came to you in the village, at first you were intrigued. I was showing, I assume, Sam sitting uh, in front of some candles with... He's. I mean, listen. This is probably culturally insensitive to me for, for me to call this this because it's probably something like legitimate in this culture. But he's got a triforce that he's made out of wood and tied with string. It looks like, and then a key. Uh, and Murray says, uh, "Then whoa, what's happening with my camera? Whoa!" Well, that happened. That happened earlier. I just figured that it was not worth commenting on. That's creepy. My camera's like flickering sideways and stuff. Ah, look at my hand. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Goodbye, camera. Uh, <laughs> uh, she says, then you understood that religion was a terrible weapon. That's when you came to see me. And then we're going into uh, Dambala's Chamber 1, which I assume is the first real level post tutorial. We should probably go one real level knocked out, right? Yeah, uh, sure. Listen, this right. game this game has uh, uh, not totally hooked me in so far. Like, the mechanics are interesting to me, but there's a lot of implementation issues that we've come across. Uh, as, a, as a note, the last emperor of the Byzantine Empire is listed as uh, 1449 to 1453. Okay. However, as, as I'm sure we all know, um, the... It wasn't until 1492 when Europeans discovered that the Americas. So, well, this there was obviously at least a 40-year time span between when Sam died and when Hans or whatever his name is died. Marcus. <laughs> Marcus. But that was I mean that was when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, but the Vikings were here first. But I don't think the Vikings were bringing over a lot of African slaves. To I, work sugar I also fields. don't think that the Vikings were bringing over Africa. <laughs> that would have been a little out of their way. Um, so we're in, we're in just a, a, a room that is uh, four tiles, and there's Sam on one tile, there's a portal thing, there's like a locked armoire, and then an axe on the floor, and the Bree says, you okay? That's not her voice. That that voice got way like more childlike. I don't. I'm, my voices are all over the place. Sam says, "Not great," and she says, "Take your time to prepare yourself before you continue. 
Te head deeper into limbo, step onto the slab with the arrows. Okay, that's the, the candles one. The hub. This small island is the hub. You end up here before you go to a new dungeon enclosure. The slab with arrows will make you leave the island and will launch you into the dungeon. Be sure to go to equip beforehand. Uh, on the trunk, you will find everything you need to get ready. You can change your equipment, build your jack, and upgrade spells and equipment. Uh, and you can use the breach to revisit levels you've already completed. Uh, you can escape a dungeon by using the portal. You won't validate the main objective, but you'll at least keep the loot you've accumulated. Oh, so there's like a checkpoint that I can use to escape in the middle of the level, I think is what that's saying. I think. Hey, we can I think it stuff. means you can, you can escape at any time, but then you don't get... You uh -huh. don't count as having defeated it. Keep your treasure. That, that could very well be. Um, look, we put on our cool hat, we put on our magical staff. Uh, I've got two different hats. I'm gonna wear that one. The Coif of Protection. Um, which has a, a spell for it called Slash, which deals 60 to 84 damage to the target. Um, let's check our deck, see if we need to add anything. Oh wait, D-pad, right. Um, so here's another issue. Mm -hmm. It is slow to transition the menu screens. I press up, and then yeah. it changes. Oh, I thought that was like stream lag. No, down, changes. That is too long for switching menus. Down, changes. Yeah, that's, that's, that is, uh. Well, is this game like close to release? Yeah, this game comes out on Thursday, I want to say. Ooh, I, I feel like there's a day one patch in there. If, if there's a day one patch, I think it could be helpful um, because they're, they're, that like the navigating the menus in general is a little flawed right now. That delay is flawed, and then the, uh, the, the D-pad issue that we discussed before is a little flawed. Um, so it looks like my objective in this level of the dungeon is to kill the monster Mini Paros, and it's showing me where he is and what the rewards are. But then if I look around, oh, okay, wait, I can't because my breeze talking. I see something ahead which blocks your path. You'll have to defeat this lost soul in order to continue. Um, well, and then the help menu popped up and was saying it was giving me the tutorial on secondary missions, but uh, then the help menu went away all on its own. So let's go find that secondary mission. Secondary mission is an optional mission. You don't have to complete it to gain access to the next closure, but its reward might be of interest. You can open a mission list by pressing the X button. The rewards will be automatically shown right beside it. You can also use up and down. You will not always be able to complete all the missions at once, but don't panic. You can redo an enclosure. I think that's supposed to say encounter. Uh, maybe not. That you have. Uh, you can redo an enclosure that you've already done and get the rewards that you missed. Um, let's check our missions then. Okay, missions. Kill this monster. And then there's also don't activate campfire. And then there's one for activate campfires. Oh, because there's multiple campfires. So. The mission is to not activate just that specific one, I think? Maybe? How many campfires are there? I see one there, two, three. So there are four total. So one objective is to activate three campfires, and one is to not activate that specific one? I th think? Maybe. And then I have an objective to kill monsters. Um, Oops, I pressed the wrong button. All right, let's build a path. There's a treasure chest over there. So this this map has a lot more going on. There's there's a lot of uh, different areas with monsters and with decks of cards. So this is where like you start to get the building of the path becomes a bit of strategy. Like, I want that treasure chest. That treasure chest is out of the way. It's not convenient for me to get. But I really want that treasure chest, you know? Well, and notably, there's a far fewer walls in addition to having, like, just more openness with tiles. The walls are also gone. Most tiles have no walls at all. Yeah, which opens up which ones you can actually play. Oops, I didn't build a bridge to get to that spot. That was dumb. Um, what is this card? Pile of slabs, build your path list of new slabs. Oh, okay, so I can I can conjure up a pile of slabs for myself. Cool. Uh, let's put that there. You have to tap A twice to lay a slab down, which 
is annoying to me now. Oh, hey, that slab had a fire, a fire on it. I didn't even realize that. Okay, so... Um, I now realize I have three action points, and at the end of those three action points, uh, the Dungeon Master takes one of my cards. Okay, so I failed the Don't Activate a Campfire mission. So it was literally, I had one objective that was to activate three campfires, and another objective was Don't Activate Any Campfires. That's a little strange. To, to like, on the first mission in the game, or the first level of the game, give me uh, two conflicting missions so I can't complete both. That, that, that kind of feels bad. Um, well... Maybe maybe the game is preparing like like there's going to be a lot of levels where you get either do no campfires or do at least three campfires of the core. Yeah. But don't do this middle path. We don't like it. we don't like centrists here. <laughs> uh Dungeon Master says, Other souls have already given form to this place. And Sam says, Shouldn't it have changed when I came along? And Dungeon Master says, You're not that important. I don't know exactly what that conversation meant, but I do know that there's a fallen king here who I'm going to go battle. Um, the battling... It's always tough with a game like this because the battling is not very interesting so far, but it's like this weird balancing act they have to do where if they make the battles too like complex or difficult at the start, then nobody's going to want to play it because you're just going to immediately be like, this game's too hard, but... If it's not interesting at the start, then, like, it's not interesting. And so, that's always tough. But the, the basic concept of the battle system, I think I kind of like. That you, you know, build a deck of cards and have different, like, I like that there's these built-in abilities that are attached to different equipment. Like the slash that I'm going to use right now to completely kill this guy. Heck yeah. And I got some power and an armor blessing. Um, which is a new card. So then when I get to one of the spots where I can add to my deck, I now have another one to add. Like, I like, I like all that conceptually. I think that's where I'm at with this game so far, is that the concepts at play here seem kind of cool, but there's, there's execution problems that might, might be too much execution problems. Um, well, so what I'm seeing now that you now that you're out of the tutorial, you have just one character. Correct. And all of your attacks seem to just be like deal X amount of damage to the other side. And then all their attacks seem to be deal X amount of damage to you, which feels like low levels of Pokemon where everything kind of sucks. <laughs> Well, I do have, so I have, uh, like, this attack uh, does 19 damage, blessed attack, and also increases my attack by 15%. Um, and then I've got this card does no damage, but increases my attack by 25% for two turns. So, like, I'm going to lay that down on myself, and then I'm going to do blessed attack, so those are going to stack. So now my attack has gone up even more. So like there, there's 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 a little bit there, but I'm definitely still in. Like I, I hope that the combat system is gonna get a little more uh, interesting than it is so far. I guess. So there's no terrain. There's just like the the hero side and the foe side. Mm -hmm. Um, and because there's no terrain, as far as we know, then it just comes down to like status effect maybe and like all, every attack every modifier we've seen so far is just like plus damage or minus damage right it's not like paralyze or burn or yeah. like they go at half speed so they're always going second in the round or something um, yeah it does not seem like it and you know it's, it doesn't have to have necessarily those specific things but like Something besides I go, you go, and we're each going to roll a d6 against each other. Also. <laughs> you, know, you know what I wanted to have that this is just, it's unfair because this has nothing to do with this game, is I've been playing Super Mario RPG, and why just, why doesn't every 
turn-based JRPG have the mechanic that if you tap A right as you attack or are getting attacked, it gives you a bonus. Because that's the best. Oh, no, I hate that. I hate oh, really? that so much. Yeah, it's, it's my least favorite thing. I don't want that. I want a way to... If, if people want that in their game, that's fine. But I want... You could even call it an accessibility option, mm -hmm. where it's like, I'm playing a game and I've picked this genre because I have bad reflex. Okay. Don't make me do reflex thing. That's... And like, pick it. It's always 75% of the maximum value or whatever some fair number is. That's, that's um, very fair. That's a good point. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know why I'm bad at action commands. Because I can play Bayonetta on normal, so you'd think that I'd be good at action but apparently no. <laughs> I tried to play, um, what's it? It's called Bug Story, I think it's mm -hmm. called. Bug it's Fable. basically Bug Fable, yeah. Bug Fable is basically a Paper Mario style game. Right. Um, and as far as, like, it's, it's kind of hard. Like, as far as I can tell, like, the fights areas overall are balanced with the idea that you'll be getting the action commands almost all the time, so you'll be blocking almost all damage Aww. and, like, doing the hits so that everything happens in as quick a turn as possible. Um, and I just kept getting face-stomped by the enemies. That um, doesn't feel it, good. It, it didn't feel good. Like, I managed to get through the first little chapter bit and get to, like, the second dungeon, but... I felt like I was struggling the entire time in a way that you, in Paper Mario you don't feel like you're struggling. It feels more. It felt more less fun than Paper Mario. Mm. Yeah, um, that's Paper Mario had that mechanic, but it never felt essential to me playing that one. Well, and I think that Bug Fable was pretty clearly designed for people that had Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. Right. For 500 hours, and then wanted a game that was Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door 2. Okay. Um, which is, like, fine. Like, my brother would like it. He, he played Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. But I hadn't, and I'm not good at that. One of the main action commands is, like, hold the direction until the thing fills up. I can do that one. <laughs> Another one is, like, push A at the right time. I can do that one. But the third one is, uh, like, it beeps. And then on the third beep, it shows a button, and you have to push that button almost immediately to get the bonus. And I can never do that one, ever. So it's one of my characters is just, like, always a half effect, which is real dis demoralizing. Yeah. That's, uh, I guess the, the like, the in, in Super Mario RPG, <clears throat> excuse me, the, like, normal action commands of just, like, when you're doing an attack, pressing A... And uh, when you're getting attack pressing A, I'm decent at. But the um, the magic spells in that game also have uh, like timing based things, and I, I I almost never use the magical abilities because I cannot figure out what the timing is supposed to be in them. So maybe I don't like that kind of mechanic as much as I thought I did. <laughs> um, what am I gonna do against this guy? I'm gonna do my slash, big slash. Down to 31 health. Um, I'm down to 127 health, and I've just realized that uh, I probably need to, like, my health carries over throughout the dungeon, so I'm going to use this heal card on myself. Brings me up to 136. And then uh, I've got two actions left, so I'll be able to beat him with two cards here. I suppose that's the. Um, that, that realization is the potential. Uh, long-term concern with uh, the battles in this game is that you're not fighting each individual battle. You're fighting through the whole level. So you have to... Yeah, be... you're fighting the whole level. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking about that. I was just kind of going really really. Um, hey, I just found a sarcophagus and it says find treasure dot 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 or bitter combat. Uh, it's not your day. A monster spotted, spotted you. And a monster Spartan. appeared right next to me. These monsters, are they lost souls? Or traces of the passage of lost souls. And the dungeon master says, Last so long, they've d dissolved into limbo. Oh man, these are people are just like me, and they're stuck and trapped here, and it's sad. Wait, do, so do we have an explanation yet of, like, the world and who this dungeon master character is and why they want you to not get to the afterlife? 
No. Um, okay, because I know, like particularly that this part doesn't make sense. Like in Hades, you're trying to get out, <laughs> and it makes sense that when you die, they drag you back to the start. With right. this, you're trying to get to the afterlife, die, and then don't go to the afterlife because you died. That doesn't follow. The, well, we I need think, some better lore here. I think that my, I mean, th this is has not been explained yet, but my, the way I've read it so far is that, uh, Dungeon Master is the master of Limbo, and when people get stuck in Limbo, they become minions of the Dungeon Masters. So... It behooves the dungeon master for people to get stuck here because then he gets more minions, I think. Oh, so if he kills you, then you've been converted into a minion. Yeah, if, 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 if it takes me too long to get through, and by killing me, he slows down my progress effectively. I think is what it's trying to say. Okay, I could buy that. Yay, I need him. Um, okay. Ooh, look at that. That's a that is a fetching jacket or armor. I would wear that if I was cooler than I am. Um, so there's that portal I was talking about. So you can't just bail at any time there, Marvel, but there is a bail. Which my mission is to beat this uh, boss guy in this level, but I'm at 105 out of 310 health. I'm not sure it's such a good idea for me to try to go fight the boss guy, you know? But I am sure. Do you have some sort of between fights healing that you can do? Um, yes, because I have this potion. Small health potion restores 50 health points. But there's some treasure chests. There's a treasure chest there and one there. So I think I'm going to uh, not aim for the portal yet. I'm going to aim for the treasure chests and hope that I can get some more healing items from, from treasure chests. Um, because that's a good point. I had forgotten that there was healing items. What is this or this card? Da 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 da. -da. A new action point grants you another action during your turn. Oh, sweet. Let's drop that there. I guess. Did I drop that there? Oh, I just used it. Okay, I just have an extra action point now. Okay. Maybe I should have saved that. Was that not strategically sound of me? I wonder. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, because the action point only applies to you. Like, it's the I overworld this, action point. The first level is, is this picky, but also this unclear about what your options are, then that feels poor. Well, I mean, it does. It, it's been doing a good job of, like, any card I highlight, it's going to tell me what that card does. So nothing's like... Right, but... Like, if you have to use your resources super precisely to beat even the first dungeon, but also it's not quickly explaining to you what all these are. Like, um, so I played Into the Breach with my brother a few weekends ago, and every single fight you have to do very well. Like, from the very first round of the of run, you have to already be doing well, but it shows you exactly the playing field. There's not really any hidden knowledge. So the whole time you're able to do well just by playing. I'm a big fan of Into the Breach. I, I got, uh, I never finished it, but I really liked what I played of it. I certainly didn't finish it. He got through one island. I think, I can't remember if I got through the second one or not. Oh man, I have 41 health. Oh my goodness, I have no attacks in my regular deck. Well, I'll just use my big attack, so that'll be fine. But wait, do I have a healing ability? No. Okay, so we'll just attack and finish him off. Okay. Um, I need to use my potion as soon as I get out of this fight. Because... 41 health. So we're gonna drink that potion. And this battle up ahead I'm gonna have to get into with 
two of those electric eyeball things. Or I can bail through the portal. <sighs> and I think I'm going to bail through the portal. As much as that's not an exciting way to end my First Impressions podcast episode of this game, uh, I don't feel confident about my ability to win a fight without taking 91 points worth of damage. Um, yeah, so we're going to bail. Um, so... This game has flaws, and those flaws are pretty heavy. I feel like um, there's um, communication issues in terms of like the tutorial not being super informative, and um, just uh, the systems aren't necessarily well explained. And uh, like Logan pointed out earlier, the visuals are like I kind of like the art style. Like, in a still, I think I would like this, but seeing it in motion, there's there's kind of a lot happening at any given time. Um, you know what this would benefit from is is something that Dandy Ace did, is it had a um, pretty heavy vignette on the thing. So the edges of your screen were always kind of dark, and so that really helped focus your eye on the like immediate surroundings of your character. And uh, I think this game could benefit from something like that. So, and yeah, just to sort of drive the point home, here you're standing in the lobby area between levels, mm -hmm. and when you look at the map, you're, it's, it's a two by two in terms of the actual grid. Um, one of the tiles is moving up and down with an animating green circle swirling around it. The next tile has a mirror that's like constantly got particles flowing into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a tile with uh, luggage that is uh, static, and then a tile with a lava, which is static. And then on top of those four tiles, there's four other tiles forming a grid, three white and the purple one where you have selected, and, and right. they're all pulsing. And then behind that, there are additional like swirls of wind that go past through the tunnel of limbo or whatever, like snow particles that occasionally fall in and out. It's just really active. Even on this tiny little screen that's just literally for, yeah. for effectively four points of data. Yeah, you're, you're, you're standing at what could be a menu, and yeah. it's just so much. Um, and then there are issues within that menu itself, like we talked about, where like navigating the menu, you know, once I knew what to do of like use the use the analog stick in the menu and use the D-pad to switch menus, then it wasn't so bad. But the fact that the D the D pad just shouldn't work when you're in a sub menu, it just it just shouldn't work, and then that wouldn't be an issue. So yeah, um, I, this game's out on Thursday. This episode's probably coming out on Thursday, so this is this is probably available as you're hearing it. I think there are some interesting systems at play here. I'm definitely going to play more of it. I want to um, see if I can get a better feel for those things that I think could be good in this game to get past some of these things that are not thrilling me on a first look. But but yeah, on, on a first look, I you know it's 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 got some interesting systems at play, but it feels like it's missing some polish. Um, it's missing some polish on the mechanics level, and it like maybe has too much polish on the visuals level. <laughs> They kind of put too well, many ideas into play on the visuals. I mean, they say that good design is knowing what, when you should not add things and instead take things away. Yeah, that's yeah. This this maybe needs a couple things simplified on the visual side. Things. Can I can I just point out one last thing that's really bothering me? Looking at the the go, screen we're looking at right ahead. now. Um, it's your podcast. <laughs> so the, the, the white glowing tiles are showing where I can move to, right? That's that's what that indicates, and the purple is the one that I've selected. Okay, yeah, I follow now. And if I if I like move over to the the trunk, then there the the, the white square around the trunk pulses. It's, it's blue or purple now to indicate that that's what I have selected, and then I can move to the trunk. But when I put it on my own character, it still pulsates blue. I obviously can't move to this square. I'm already on this square. But here's the thing that bothers me: the inconsistency. It pulses at a different rate when it's on my character than all the white ones. Look at that. Oh my gosh, now that I notice it. Right? But when when it's on a tile I can move to, then it's the same. Why? Yeah, that's... Why would you do oh that? Oh boy. I don't... Now I'm gonna be... Is it... Is it even... 
Okay, I zoomed in because I thought maybe even the white ones were moving slightly differently. But the white ones are all moving the same. Huh. They're moving at the same rate, but um, I'm not sure they're always... I think synced. they're synced up because that, that, that point where they all intersect in the middle seems to be hitting correctly. Okay, yeah. But but if I have the blue one on my own character, it's 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 still at the same rate, but it's off beat for some reason. How strange. How strange. Yeah, a, a couple of design things that just seem kind of out of whack on this one. I don't know if it's getting a day one patch. Um, day one patches in this switch are actually pretty rare, especially for a digital game. So I would expect. Wait, that wait, wait. Not, but day one patches on Switch are rare. Rarer than they every are on other systems. Every time I put in a game card, there's some sort of thing that wants to download it right away. Oh. Okay, maybe not every. Maybe like three and four. I. But like most of the time, when I get a game card, one of like me or my brother puts it in while the other one of us goes to get food because huh. we know it's going to be like at least a two minute download. Oh, okay. Well, like, God, that's another. That's a great benefit to it is when there are patches. They're so fast compared to downloading a patch on my PlayStation. Oof. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't expect that this will but but yeah I'm, I'm definitely gonna play more of it um i will write up some thoughts when i've got um a little more of the game under my belt where i feel like i have more of a formed opinion over on geek to geek media so you can find that there but hey uh logothor is here logothor tell us about your podcast because it's great and it there's uh, just a billion episodes there are i would it was a daily podcast decided after after the Pokemon Gen 1 was complete, after there were 151 episodes, that <laughs> I would stop doing it every single day. Um, because that, having to do it exactly on that schedule, was really grating after a while. I would, but yeah. I, I wouldn't say that I necessarily do less. I just... Um, I don't know. So so I've, I've been playing a lot with my brother, Mm-hmm. And we've been playing more stuff on the Switch, and because uh, because one of my Patreon tiers is video versions of all the stuff, and I can't currently record Switch content on my PC, those are just uh, Patreon episodes. Um, but the main feed, lately my brother and I have been playing Majora's Mask, which you said you were a big fan of. I am. Um, and... Then, without my brother, I've been playing uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. I think the first episode was like an hour. The next episode of that was like three hours. <laughs> then there was like another episode that I did uh, yesterday that was like five or six hours. Oh my god! I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it Baldur's Gate Edition Nonstop Mega Mix. A big DDR joke about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you get a good game, and then you sit down and you play it. And, and had I been trying to have a daily schedule, I would have taken that, and I would have carefully tried to, like, chunk it up into mm-hmm. things to, like, spread it across a bunch of days. And now it's like, whatever, people can get a six-hour episode, <laughs> and if they listen, they listen. If they don't, that's fine. Listen, if Dan Carlin can do it, we can all do it, right? Like, who says that? There's no, there's yeah. no laws on podcasting. We can put out episodes as long as we want. I certainly wouldn't take four months to put an episode like Carlin does. <laughs> but I also uh, would not research my episodes at all. He uh, apparently does a lot of reading. He does. It's terrifying. I, I have a buddy who uh, I used to work with who is a huge Dan Garlin fan. And I, I, you know, I've listened to a few of his studies, but it's just there's so much. Um, but hey, uh, I, I highly recommend the Ocarina of Time series that you and your brother did, and I'm very excited about the Majora's Mask series. And uh, what's fun about them is that I, I get the sense that it's more him than you is like, like a terrifyingly expert level player of these Zelda games and knows like all, yeah. of, like not all the speedrun tricks, but enough speedrun tricks that like sometimes I'm like, why is he going in that? Oh well, okay, then now everything makes sense. Like, yeah, he he's not personally a speedrunner, but he's a speedrun enthusiast. So he watches these run, and when there's new speed runs, he's interested and he'll he'll watch them regularly. Like the other day, it was like I think it was Wind Waker or something. There, there was some game that um, had a cut a particular cut scene sip that was like gonna put a minute off the world record. And I'm like, oh, a guy's doing that tonight. You want to watch that? And he's like, yeah, we might watch that. And we didn't end up doing it. But like that, most I don't think most people would be like, oh. 
that's going to be my <laughs> evening is to watch this hour and a half video game speed run that might be a world record. <laughs> I it, it is in Majora's Mask the first thing that happened, like, well first you all started collecting coin or rupees in the very first room, which was like why. And it's because apparently you can get enough. I don't know. I got confused about that part. But then, as soon as you get into clock oh, time, yeah. your brother's like, okay, now we're just going to go listen to the storyteller until we get as late as possible. And I'm like, no, but you still have things you have to do. Go do the things first. It stressed me out yeah. that, that it was just like, no, we're just going to skip all that for now and then do it all like as quickly as possible. Uh, it's a very different way of experiencing a game that I have played over and over again. So I'm enjoying it for that side of things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've been sort of watching from the background as he plays because he really likes, uh, he really, really likes it. But I'm sort of like, okay, I guess. Because he, he skips all the story stuff, which is really where I like. Mm -hmm. I like to, um, and I'm just like, okay, we'll, we'll just chatter a little bit while mostly William sees <laughs> George <laughs> Well, it's fun. Y'all have a good, uh, uh, a good dynamic together. So it is like a cool way to revisit some cool games, but also like it's fun conversations happening as you guys. So I enjoyed a lot. Uh, I, I, I will not pretend that I have listened to all of your episodes because, like I said, there's a terrifying amount of them. But every time I do, listen, yeah, it's great and, fun. And sometimes I, I've on multiple occasions done a game that people have decided that they like so then they stop listening to all of those episodes because they want to play it themselves uh. so that's what ha like i stopped doing planescape torment because brett said i love planescape torment but now i want to play the game myself so i'm not going to listen to any of those because i don't want the spoilers okay well you're the only <laughs> one who's even commented about that one so i guess i'll do a different game <laughs> and then uh dragon quest builders 2 mm -hmm. um is a uh, fine but the only person who said anything about it is uh, Kylie, who listened to three episodes and then decided to stop listening to that series because they wanted to get it themselves. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then I was doing, uh, after Pokemon Red, I'm like, okay, I'll do Pokemon Silver. And then both you and Daniel K said, oh, we can't listen to the Pokemon Silver. <laughs> we're, doing our own, we're doing our own playthrough of Gen 2. And I'm like, okay. I keep picking weirder and weirder games in my practice. <laughs> Well, I, I almost booted up Majora's Mask the other day to be like, I'm going to play along as a listen. And then I was like, nah, because I'm, I'm still hopeful that it's coming to Switch. And even though it'll be the exact same game, I'm like, no, nah, I'll play it. I'll wait and play it, it on Switch. It won't come to Switch. No way it'll come to Switch. You don't think so? I do not. I think even if there is some sort of Nintendo 64 online thing that they do, which mm -hmm. I don't think that there's really going to be in the first place. Um, I doubt the Majora's Mask would be in it because uh, it's just like they put Ocarina of Time and, and Majora's Mask just doesn't get the popularity with most people. Yeah. Like the Majora's Mask fans are really diehard fans of it and everyone else is like, no, I didn't like it. Time. It was impossible. Time. Resetting. I have heard, like, I, I can't remember... Some podcast I was listening to the person talked about, they're like, oh, I, I couldn't play Majora's Mask, it was too much pressure with the clock, and I'm like, it's not that bad. Like, I feel like the first time I played that game, I maybe ran out of time in the middle of a dungeon, like, once. Like, it, like as long as you think about it, and, you know, go like, okay, I'm gonna go into a dungeon, I'm gonna reset time and slow things down before I start the dungeon. It's not that bad, it's not that hard. Anyway, I love Majora's Mask. Uh, I'm not on Switch. Don't, don't take this away from me. It's coming to Switch. Please. I mean, I played Majora's Mask when I was uh, apparently 12, mm. given its release date, because I played it right when it came out. And as a 12-year-old, I could manage it. So when people tell me that they can't do it, what they're telling me is that they're like <laughs> less able to manage their time than a 12-year-old me. And I just, they must be very bad at time management or something. I don't know. Majora's Mask is the only place that I'm good at time management, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not good at time management context, but I could still play the game. Yeah. And if you have to reset time, you have to reset time, it's fine. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that punishing. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, all right. I think I'm going to call it there. Um, yeah, that was uh, a long way down. Uh, some interesting ideas. Execution seems to be off, but I will play more of it and report back on geek 2 geekmediacom So check that out. Um, 
And uh, thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate it. It seemed like this worked okay. Like, I, right? It worked pretty well. Yeah, no, it was, this was a good format. I think um, we should do this again. I think if there was, um, if, if it was a game where there's more story based, mm -hmm. then you could split, you could, because you're having difficulty with the voices. Mm. First of all, it helps if different voices have more clearly different accents. Mm -hmm. For example, with Marcus, you might have gone with like a funny Germanic accent, <laughs> and then you'd have your normal American and then funny Germanic. Yeah. Um, also, you can be like, you play this character, and then in the dialogue, the other person is doing a separate voice, which makes a little, like now you're not switching between yep. two voices. Or maybe you're only doing two and they're doing two or something. I didn't. Um, it didn't even occur to me that that was an option until you jumped in and did it. And I was like, oh, hey, that's pretty smart. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, you, you have to get someone who's like comfortable doing. Like, I right. personally am very comfortable doing that. Sam does that a little. Uh, my brother isn't super big on doing voices or even like speaking at all during the podcast. But... <laughs> Your brother's input is often click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he loves playing the video game, but but is a uh, kind of shy. <laughs> and like we had we had to. Re he insisted that we remove like the first five minutes of a podcast that we did once because like I hit record and then we just talked about stuff that wasn't absolutely strictly about. Kirby Superstar. We just talked about stuff. And he's like, oh, no, that was dumb. We have to get rid of that. And I'm like, what? He's like, no, get get rid of it. And I'm like, okay, okay, we'll get rid of it. But like, well, reassure the, for me. The off topic that... rambling is, I feel, mm -hmm. um, I feel the good part. I like, totally like, based agree. off of, of, of Skeleton Pod and No Cat and the Daniel K experience, those, that vibe, like, we're kind of playing a video game, and that's maybe the goal, but we're just gonna have a cool, fun time. You know, I think especially in in light of, of the last year that we've all had, that's what I love about these audio-only Let's Play podcasts, is that it's the feeling of sitting around and playing a game with someone. And in, in your case, you and your brother are actually getting to do that together, but like that's what happens when you sit around and play a game together like you talk about the game but you also just talk about random stuff that comes up and so like I, yeah i like the diversions i think they're fun reassure him from me that that i love that stuff and i think he's great on the podcast so yeah all right um uh i listen to most of i was gonna say i listen to most of the podcasts i listen to like when i'm at work mm -hmm. i have a job where i listen on headphones while i do the job um so I get a lot of podcast listening time in, um, and yeah, it's sort of like, ah, oh, someone actually interesting listening. Oh no. You cut out yeah. there. I cut out. You cut out right as you said someone interesting, and, and then- Someone, and... well, like, someone someone interesting to like listen to, and, and then not have to think about the fact that I am mostly waiting until four o'clock. Like, I get there, and I have a very small number of important things to do and then waiting for those to happen is is most of my day yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's 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 my podcast time to as well in the work like my job uh often doesn't require me to use like the language part of my brain and so i can put a podcast in for the language part of my brain to pay attention to and then my hands just do all the other stuff that i need to do kind of uh in, in you know a pseudo autopilot mode so that's my podcast time yeah too. Um, all right, the podcast is ending now. Thank you for listening, and everybody be cool and stuff. Look for Vegas being a good check out Logan's first podcast. And uh, until next time, friends, tap A. Until next time. And hope for the best. If you enjoyed my show, it would mean a lot if you would rate and review it on iTunes, share it on social media, or check out my Patreon. You can find all of my stuff at troidalpower.carrd.co. This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at ProbablyWork for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called ProbablyWork.com.